Hello, Warriors. Good think a lot Thursday. <laughs> That's a new one, Dale. That is a new one. I well, you know, say- Blake, I do. You know, I'm I, I'm thinking too much. You know, you're assessing the week coming into the end of the week, and uh, you know, sometimes I just overthink things. So, don't think too much. Just trade your charts. So, hi, Patrick, Mike, Bran. Okay, good luck on that, James. <laughs> <laughs> Sinatra, Marcus, there's Blake, Ryan's here, George, how are you, AJ, how's it going? All right, okay, team. let's uh, start with this. So, you guys uh, know I, I've been long vowel. I was uh, thinking that there might be a uh, third drive to a bottom here, but, you know, that didn't manifest. You know, I was looking for what's over here. So, and Blake didn't think there would either. So, you know, I, I just went for it. And then the beauty of this uh, trade is 14 was pretty much identified. Blake also talked over 14. We have something going. And then, you know, you had your Friday, then you had a relief rally. Look at that. I mean, really textbook, right? So, you know one of the oldest ones in the book that past resistance becomes new support and uh, vice versa. Um, and I just want to share an option rule with you. You guys know I, I do some options. I was buying uh, SQQ calls, which is a triple bearish um, NASDAQ 100 ETF. And we left an island here uh, you know, about a one-month island shows up better on the daily. So anyway, um, the calls I bought have doubled. So what I do in options is I take uh, half off, and then it's a free trade. So the worst thing that could happen, it's kind of like moving to BE after you've taken partial profits, but, you know, there's no profits. There are profits on a double, but you do risk the premium on the other half. So, um, see that, how we gapped down, and then how we gapped up? So, you know, if it was just the market, I wouldn't be taking half, but it's, it's a money management thing. And I found I'm always better off taking half and uh, taking the risk out of the trade. We always are. Okay, so uh, my conviction is uh, certainly building that uh, gold's going to flush under this. I think it's going to be a great buying opportunity. Maybe it'll, you know, take it out by 40 bucks or so. And silver looks uh, the worst. Um, I don't know. Maybe we're going to try the breakout. And Dixie, you know, I still think we're going to make a move towards 105. So um, I'm going to bring Ryan in here and and Blake. Yes, sir. So so we, talk, we, we talked talk about, about uh, 152, uh, getting a low reaction off it, Blake and uh, Ryan. Yeah, this was the big one. This yeah. was the big one, and uh, touch wood. Yeah, well, I had a little uh, six pit dip under, but uh, yep, yeah, it's it's held, and we're seeing a bit of a bounce. Um, yeah, I did tap it. I said I was going to tap it if it looked all right. So I'm, yeah. I'm long down there. I've, I've already sliced in the first move up to the 50s, 60s. Um, I, I did the same thing. Took a half off just because there's so much volatility in it. I wanted to book it and get my wrist down as quick as possible. Right. But, um, See. Yeah. One one fifty three is the level now. Okay. So, and uh, you know, just uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna okay. add to what Ryan's saying. Um, this is such a huge level. I, I stuck in some bids too uh overnight. My my average is at one fifty two thirty, but I'm long. I mean, this is a this is a level that I mean, it is such a big pivot, and I can't tell you how often we've talked about it, revisiting it, getting here. Once we get here, what what are we gonna do? And it's like it it is scary, wouldn't you say, Ryan, as you're as you're as you're coming off of a nine hundred pip drop over the course of 
two weeks uh, or whatever it, it's been to, to, to try to step in and st- stick your nose out right in front of that uh, big level. It is hard to do, but you know, yeah, you, you got, you plan your trade, you trade your plan, right? Yeah. Well, you know, we had a big level at 156, uh, 157, a big level at 155. It, it went through it like knife through butter. Um, but this level goes all the way back to 1986. So you have to give it some respect uh, considering we've been a thousand odd pips away from it. Um and if it's going to stop somewhere, these are the types of levels it, it will stop at. Now, whether it stops for five minutes and then we go go again, that remains to be seen. Um, because, you know, as I've been saying, flows don't care about lines on a chart. Um, if people have got stuff to sell, they've got stuff to sell and they'll keep doing it until they finish selling it. But for now, we've got to bounce. Um, it's given an opportunity that was far better at any of the other big figures so far. And... Um, see what it does. I'm locked in, so I can't lose now. And that's all I care about. Yeah. Right near the 200 day as well. Be a nice place for it to hold. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm hoping for you guys. Who knows? Uh, Who knows? Euro. Uh, we, do you think this turn in Euro pound means something here, Ryan? No, I, th- I think this is just the, the usual speed between cable and, uh, Euro dollar, which are, are really doing nothing. I mean, you know, what do we got in Euro dollar today? Thirty pip range um, in cable. We've got a forty-three pip range. So this, yeah, this is just the usual cable moving more than uh, Euro dollar because um, Euro stone is not doing much. German IFO was out this morning. That was crap. So there's no, there's been no reason to buy the euro. But th- this is this is the market we're in at the moment. You have a look at yeah. Euro yen. Okay, it's it's crapping out following all the other yen pairs. Okay. Um, then you match that off with something like Euro Aussie, Euro CAD, and they're taking off. So these two, cable and uh, Euro dollar, are just uh, sitting sitting in a boat in the river, drinking beer uh, while everyone else is running around like crazy uh, with their Well, I, I'm going to crack one open here at about 2780. <laughs> you uh, do so, Ryan. mate. You do that, mate. I am. I'm. I am. I'm going. You know. I might. I might join you. It goes down like water you. here in the desert, doesn't it, Blake? <laughs> it's like water beer. Um. Anyway, uh, that's a level I'm looking at for longs and pound. So we'll see. Uh, I did want to ask you the commodity currencies. I tried to catch short. I, I didn't like the way it was closing. I just got out. I see no reason to. It's like a breakout. Yeah. It doesn't look like a a false breakout. I'm I'm in I'm still in this one. I did a little bit at uh, just into the big figure one thirty eight, and I managed to get a bit away yesterday. Um, I've added more at one thirty eight forty, but I, I took the position size down. It's going, but it's going much slower. Um, I'm one over one thirty nine, and I'm done uh, for me. That's that's the the big level for me. And then and then Blake can have his one forty that he put in the chat room earlier. <laughs> yeah, too much mo. Look at this reading, uh, eighty. Yeah, you know. it is. I mean, look, it's it's been really strong off that one thirty six. Really? But okay, the bank account again. This is one that's just caught up. I mean, would you would you be thinking about buying this one just based on the U.S. side of the trade? You know? um, well, I Do you yeah, think it I, I would. I'd like to see where it's at when the Dixie gets to 105. You know how sometimes a lot of charts you yeah. don't have conviction about yeah. and you yeah. have one that you do yeah. and you could key off all your other trades off that event should it happen. Yeah. That's the way I'm looking at the currency board when I, I'm, when I see Dixie up around 105, 105, 20. Uh, you know, besides looking to fade that, I'll be looking for currency pairs i i'm still i you know i i can't buy the aussie yet yet either and if i it did what uh, we talked about cleaned out the stops um under that where everyone had them and i think we're right at 61.8 right now uh, so uh, but uh, i you know that, i can't buy through. a candle I think, huh? I think we're through i had the 61.8 at 6530 so we're, we're through that okay by like 10 yeah yeah. Okay. So, you know, and I really was bullish. Uh, was waiting for a pullback, but the way it's developed, 
um, you know, I, I was looking the wrong way. Yeah, so, well, I tried it. I tried it into that 66, 65, 80. I got stopped this morning. Um, yeah. But again, you know, this this isn't moving because the Aussie dollar is suddenly crap and everything in Australia is going, going to hell. This is purely being driven a lot by commodities and, and by what's happened in the end. You look at Aussie yen, you know, that's absolutely yeah. collapsing. So, you know, you're right what you say. You need to, you need to, you know, maybe look at one asset and that's your key to the others. But you've also got to look at what's driving this lower. There's, there's no fundamental reason why the dollar, US dollar, should be strengthening here. There's no fundamental reason why the Aussie should be strengthening here. So something else is pushing it. And, well, risk um, off. Risk off. Well, you could say that, but then we're not seeing the same move in bonds. You know, if it was if it was blanket risk off, you'd see a, a really decent bid in bonds, and we're not really. That's, what, that's how they used to act. <clears throat> yeah, they're they're more like yeah. a risk asset, a risk asset, than a flight to safety. At least for now, still is that way. Yeah, I mean, it's not, nothing is. You can look at one asset and be. think risk off. You can look at another and think it's not. I mean, look at Dollar Mex. Um, you know, we, we're seeing Dollar Mex cracking up through a big eight level, eighteen fifty. Um, that's not the Trump trade. That's that's part of this unwind. You know, you've, if you've got the yen going bid, that's what everyone's been borrowing to use to stick it in Mex, borrow it cheaply and stick it in the high yielders. So if the yen's unwinding, the Mex carry is going to unwind, and that's just you know, cracking level after level. Um, but what has, what has dollar mex got to do with, you know, what has the dollar in this currency got to do with um, what's happening in the end? It's nothing. Yeah. Uh, the mar market feels like it's uh, trading on um, more on economic weakness and strength, copper. Yeah. Right. WTI, Another, yeah. WTI. That's coming off again. That's coming huh? off, so that that's not helping uh, dollar CAD. You right. know, that's right. that's making it move higher as well. Look at dollar China, Dale. Oof, that's that's cleaned me out this morning. Oh yeah, that, so they were the yen and China were trading pretty closely together. Oh yeah, there you go. There you wow. go. Wallop. Yeah, yeah. All right, finally, it's catching up. Yeah. That, uh, which do you think leads? Yen. Uh, yeah, at the moment, yen is, is doing a lot of things. It's doing a it, lot of things. Yeah, it turned um, before this, and it, this is kind of like a catch-up move. Not mustard, yeah, well catch-up. Yeah, they cut rates. They surprisingly cut rates yesterday, which you wouldn't expect uh, the currency to strengthen on that yeah. much. Um, but whether that cut has now got some inflows coming back in, um, I don't know. We had this, this uh, U.S., bunch of executives, you know, part of this US-China business board thing. They were over there in China. So maybe they've liked what they've heard and they've come back and said, right, let's get back into China again. Um, we'll hear about that, no doubt, in two weeks after they finish buying in and they're trying to sell it to the rest of us. But, uh, yeah, so, you, you know, you sit down in the morning, you see a move like Dollar China, and you think, what what the hell's going on, you know? Yeah. I'll tell you, the magni Magnificent Seven... None of them look good. Even Apple doesn't, which is the best. Doesn't look good. NVIDIA, new lows. Uh, Blake, uh, your view on risk? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my view. There you go, Dale. My all view right. on risk. No, yeah. you know, it's um, like a cartoon with all the different, uh, you know, signs in there yeah of, yeah yeah you, yeah, well, you, you, you know. think too much think too that's much right. thursday that's right yeah. um well real quick uh you know as far as uh, as far as the equities go i mean we can do uh, a couple of things first, first of all i just want to say that uh the dollar mex um the pattern in play has been closed we hit the 618 retracement 1850 pretty big resistance up here and as I was mentioning on um, on, on the trade off last night with uh, Chris Weston, is that uh, you know FX has led a lot of these moves in risk, and we can see it a couple hours ahead of time. It's it's been pretty nice, and it doesn't happen all the time. 
but you have to imagine money's moving in the world's largest market, which happens to be FX, and it moves there, and then everybody catches wind that it's moving, and things happen. So you look at like the S and P. We're we're almost completed a a a bear flag pattern, uh, you know. And as we talk about here, Dale, horseshoes and hand grenades and technical analysis is yeah. usually works. You know, it's it's close enough works. Um, and uh, in this case, we got real close to the thirty eight percent retracement or very close. Almost completed a bull flag or a bear flag, excuse me. You got to imagine all the, the the buyers that are lined up there. Now, just because it's a 38% retracement doesn't mean that the pullback's over. It just means that I think there's there's a good chance that we start to bounce or at least consolidate here. Now, there's a lot of data that could move the needle today. And, and specifically, not so much the advanced GDP numbers, but really look at the weekly unemployment claims. We're all very sensitive right now to what happens in the labor market and uh and 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 you know because we know the fed is so so with with that data coming out today you know if 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 that data comes in you know let's say we have uh jobless claims jump over 250,000 which the market's just not going to like i mean that's that's a fact but if 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 those can come in a little bit more tame um, you know, like the market expects at 237,000, maybe, you know, back, back at 230, somewhere like that. Um, you know, market might, uh, might catch a little bit of a bid, but this is only a 38% retracement of the last leg up. I mean, you started talking about retracements longer term, Dale. I mean, you know, you go from yeah. back here in October of 2023, we haven't even gotten anywhere near the 24% retracement. So there's, there's still a lot of downside if, if we break, but Based on where the yen's gone, and I know you guys just talked a lot about the yen, um, you know, it's it, it, we've gone really far and we've hit really key levels. And uh, as Ryan pointed out, this level's been important since the mid '80s. Uh, and I, I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go, um, Ryan. Yep. I'm gonna fact check you real quick. <clears throat> you say '86. You know, uh -huh. what were you doing in 86? What punk rock concert were you at since 1986? Well, I, was, I was 14. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you were in a hair band. So, I was, pro I was probably running around uh, following my stupid football team all over the place. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I was on a skateboard uh, around then uh, when I was 14, because I think you and I are the same age, maybe 14 or 13. 15, no, 14. Anyway, um, I was, so uh, just in case you want to know, it's building positions. <laughs> for the October '87 crash, oh, while you, while you guys go. were playing with toys, that's right. I was, I was making history. That's right. You were making history, Dale. Um, <laughs> <laughs> making up, but uh, look, just making just uh, fact checking Ryan here about how important this level is. Yeah, I mean, you go all the way back into the '80s, as Ryan's pointing out. You can see what a key level it is, and. You know, just like uh, just like um, Dale, um, the older a, a technical level is, the more respect you naturally have to give him. And you know, since Dale is a fossil, uh, we have to give him lots of respect. <laughs> just kidding, Dale. You know, we like to <laughs> part no, around just, with you around here. But good to be a fossil. I, I, I do agree with what Ryan said. Um, you know, as far as uh, as far as um, you know, he's like flows or flows. If if flows are going to push, that that was my biggest fear because uh, I did put in bids, you know, in the dollar yen last night, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to get filled. But man, if 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 the 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 carry trade really unwinds, it's going to blow right through that 152 level. You know, yeah, that's what I was thinking last night. But are we going to have a crash? Go go ahead, Dale. What what's are that? we going to have a crash? Could we have a crash? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, in the yen pairs. Well, I think you know, so. just uh, you know, you know, or, continuation or risk off. It seems like you know the Nikkei got crushed, so uh, this decline in the yen has been commensurate with the decline in equities. Yes, it has globally. been, and I, and and I and I would say this that when you get to a key level like this, uh, that it's so important. I think the whole market's looking at the yen right now. I mean, I, I saw people that don't normally reference currencies referencing currencies last night in Asia, uh, in Asian trade. You know, as 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 uh, I'm sitting here trying to trade around all this, I'm seeing guys and gals that don't normally talk about currencies are talking about currencies. So that that leads me to believe that we're probably at 
a pretty big inflection point. Now, what I would be thinking in the days ahead is if, and today may give us a bounce and let's hope that economic data is, you know, strong enough to maybe give the dollar a little bit of a tailwind, maybe yields, uh, you know, perk up a little bit uh, and, 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 and the dollar yen, uh, the dollar yen yield uh, move uh, takes hold. Uh, but because you can see yields are yields are down right now as the as the bond market is moving higher. Um, but let's say, you know, yields actually move up dollar yen takes note and and starts to bounce. I do think if we do break 152 in a big way in the days ahead, that is going to get a lot of people's attention, okay. in my opinion. But but we saw but a lot of a lot of moves have also taken place uh, as a result. You know, um, you've seen a big sell off in, in silver. This was my play of the day last night on the trade off. Uh, I was looking for a break below uh, 18 uh, 2850. It 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 you know nice nice break down there. Gold's oh, pulled gosh. back to the 618 retracement. Um you know false breakout but you know we are at the 50 DMA. A lot of support here. So there's a lot of reasons why I think the market could that be supported like at current shoot. levels. It's it, it's like but it's like uh, what do you say um Ryan you know, they come knocking at the door and eventually the door <clears throat> opens. Opens, Falls right? Off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, uh, so anyway, um, you know, and you know, here comes my wife, Ed Dale. This is, you're going to get a kick out of this. So my, my wife last night or yesterday uh, afternoon, and Ryan, you might get a kick out of this too. She's like, um, she comes down. She, she, you know, remember she, she pays attention to the markets a little bit here and there, but you know, she comes running downstairs. She's like, why is the market down so much today? And I'm like, uh, uh, more sellers and buyers, uh, you know, overbought people, too much FOMO, blah, blah, blah. She goes, it's, it's, it's Harris, Kamala Harris. She's the reason why the market's going down today. Right. And I'm like, no, yeah. I don't think the market gives a shit <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Uh, it's because that's why I just saw Patrick's comment. Does Kamala control pal? Uh, look, I don't, I don't, I don't think any of this really matters right now. I, I think we are in a very overbought market and we are seeing just some profit taking right now. I mean, that, that, that is it, it really. I think, I think, um, and it's summertime. And I was, uh, I was talking to Michael Brown who, uh, Ryan, you meet with on the trade off every week uh, at Pepperstone. And he said something that, that really resonated with me. He's like, look, most of us Europeans are going on vacation or a holiday, you know, in in, in August. Who wants to put on new new uh, new positions right now? Yep. I mean, I, I, I can't argue that, right? Yeah, I'm going all day next week. So yeah, you're all screwed for liquidity next week. Right. Yeah, so right. That, it's like, that's like, when a market is vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. Within with less liquidity. And I so, think that. I think that's that's taken place over the last several days, Dale. Yeah, I think only that's going to get worse. Yeah, liquidity. but we've we've also had enough of a decline where you might have some people, you know, that have sold in anticipation of this. Um, yeah, okay. you, you know, maybe the selling is okay. going to abate a little bit. Um, so I that that's I, I hope you know I hope so too. I hope we get a little bit of sideways action. Um, I hope that the bigger moves really take place. In in uh, in September, uh, as we you know everybody gets back in the fold, we start to see um, we start to see you know the 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 election trades unfolding. But I do think that this sell off has been very aggressive, and if you've been on the short side, you need to be a little bit cautious here. You know whether you're talking about yen, whether you're talking about the S&P, whether you're talking about the NASDAQ 100 that's just reached a 50% retracement, um, whether you're talking about the uh, the Russell 2000, looks like we're going to try to give us a false breakout, but I think it's going to have some support here at the breakout point. Um, if you're looking at uh, dollar max, the dollar max just turned at 1850. Uh, this was a big pivot going back to the 1986. Just kidding, Ryan. It's only to, you know, pre-covid uh right there <laughs> so that no, but it's it goes further, it goes further. yeah uh, well oh. probably yeah I'm, I'm sure you could probably go back and back and back but this is like was the low you know before that huge spike you could yeah you could 
obviously take that back too. But you can see what a big pivot it's been in the market. And that's why, you know, I pulled off the uh, the pattern in play this morning, um, you know, right here. I, pu I pulled it off uh, because we're at key resistance and I think we've gone far enough. Now, um, will we get a, will, will the dollar max go to 19? I think eventually, and I'm, I'm buying dips in dollar max. Um, and you know, if, if you guys want to know when I'm out there doing that, you, you're in the chat room or you're, you, you, you start looking at the active pattern and plays and knowing, you know, where I'm, I'm taking some of those positions. So, um, anyway, that that's neither here nor there, but I think that a lot of, a lot of these moves are 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 exaggerated right now. One of the big ones, um, this is also on the trade off last night, is the U.S. dollar Norwegian krona. Look at this trend line, uh, Dale. Massive, huh? Yeah, big, big U.S. dollar Norwegian krona. Uh, there was just a uh, there was a Looks research like Canada. Canada. Was that it? Yeah, just just it, yes, it is. Um, if this is the trades room, so you can see like what open positions I have, but. Um, uh, if you go to the news and research room, there was a there was a, a news article uh, right no um, uh, from ING about uh, about you know the Scandies you know Norway and uh, and and um, and uh, uh, the Swedish Krona. So in case you missed that, um, it, it, they're 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 very much in the camp of buying um some of these that means they're looking for uh, a move down here but i'll tell you what if this thing breaks above 1120 it's going to be it's going to be on a rampage and i and i get the argument but sometimes you just can't stop the flows so um ryan we're going to get set up for the the data today uh, i'm going to get ready for the news coming out what are you looking at today what are you looking to play um I'm keeping an eye on, on this. Obviously, I'm trading this dollar yen, so I'm keeping an eye on that. I just had a little slice off at uh, 70s uh, in that one. I've got my dollar CAD on, my shorts in there, keeping an eye on that one. Not uh, an awful lot else because I've been I've been tipped out a few positions just in some of these moves. Um, but this this GDP data, the headline is going to be important because the first one always is. Um, but keep an eye on the core PCE number because... This is estimated, and we get PC tomorrow. So yeah, I was going to say that's gonna tomorrow. Draw, yeah, but the market's good because they're going to get this June number, and we get the real June number tomorrow. The market's going to extrapolate from one to another, if you get my meaning. So this yeah, yeah, one could yeah, be yeah. more important than the one tomorrow. Got it. Okay. All right. Um, that, uh, worth noting. Um, Dale, what 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 about you? What are you thinking today? Well, I'm. Uh taking partial profits on my bearish positions um, i'm so i could blame you if it keeps did i scare down. you <laughs> yeah i this way i i don't have to blame take responsibility and i could say that you influenced me. <laughs> Blake, gosh damn it Blake. I, I could rationalize uh you no, know, they're doubles, so I'm taking half. And yeah, good uh, for you. Good but you know, I, I don't really, I, you know, I'm not sure this is the bottom. But I, I, I think we could get a reaction. Uh, I know but we're traders, not we not investors, right, Dale? I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, we're, we're yeah, traders. But I'll tell you what, I'm, you know, what I'm salivating about is being able to buy the miners when gold. I know gold's holding that level you talked about, but I really think we're going to have a nice stop hunt under that uh 2280 level uh, i i i do i think gold is due to get punished and and i'm going to be with open arms you know around 2100 i'm going to be buying a lot, as okay. much gold as i can get my hands yeah. on but i i agree with you dale I, i'm there so, with you i mean that that's my that's uh you know the next big commitment i'm looking to trade it so all right and Maybe guys, the market all, and gold go down together. They went up together. Yeah, and you know, with this move, uh, if if the dollar yen actually can grab a foothold here and get back above like one fifty three towards one fifty four, you're gonna see you're gonna see gold um, stabilize at current levels. But um, yeah, I, I think anyway. We got about thirty seconds. I, all I care I, about. I know. Right I know an politician that thinks we're going to one six five. Oh, that there's a new high coming. Well, dollar dollar yen at one fifty two. That's all that matters. We get above one fifty three. Yeah. I think it's going to take a lot of pressure off the markets. That's that's what yeah. I'm going to be looking at today. And if uh, the dollar max can get back towards eighteen, 
I'd be playing dollar max uh, back on the long side if we can get down there, but that should not happen today. Oh, John, yes. We're just a few few uh, seconds from data, so here it comes. Ryan, yell it out if you see it before me. Yep. Durable goods. Jobless, okay. Good, good. Okay, that's what we need. Hi, hi, hi. 2.8. 2.8 look at and watch the dollar yen back above 153 here we go the dollar is going to do a little bit of a reversal dance yeah, here going and, to 105 um, no yeah yeah i mean you know we're seeing we're seeing some uh some some decent moves and uh in the dollar so uh let's see if the dollar can um can sustain these gains and uh, I like the way that the dollar yen is reacting up here. Um, cable is uh, is just pushed some pretty key support, by the way. This is a it, it just I know you got Don here and Don, by the way, I love listening to Don. He doesn't have a social media presence. So it's nice to have your, your old friend Don here. But I just yeah. want to point out if if uh, if you're a Forex Analytics subscriber, we do this analysis together like in 45 minutes every day. I've been doing it for 20 years with our clients. So um Every single day, we build out a support and resistance bias chart with, I used to call it a T-chart years ago. Um, and and uh, we do it every single day. We rearrange everything, write all new numbers, um, and go through all the analysis with everybody with us. Cable 128.60, very, very big support here, guys. Um, I This is kind of like, a, in my opinion, more of a, a, a bull bear line for uh, for for anybody who's bullish. Because we start getting below this this uh, this one twenty eight sixty level, anybody who's bullish is going to get a little bit nervous, I think. And so we're testing it right now. Hopefully, going to bounce off of it for those of you that are cable bulls, but uh, keep an eye on it. Um, Ryan, I know you've been holding down the fort without without K Man. Is he he's coming back on Friday, right? I, I believe so. Yes. Which is tomorrow. Gosh, I thought today was Wednesday. Yeah, so it's tomorrow. So K-Man should be back uh, tomorrow with you. Uh, thanks for holding down the fort there on the Flow Show. Even though it's your show, it's a Flow Show. It's your show. And you, of course, are holding down the fort. Um, Dale, thank you for guiding us every single day. And um, and uh, if, if you guys couldn't didn't catch us on YouTube, sorry about that. I, sometimes we have technical hangups. Are, which are out of our control, but you can always log in on uh, on Zoom, and this way you can actually have conversations with us because we're addressing your comments on Zoom. So, uh, Dale, have a great interview with Don. I, I'm well, I'm going to stick around because I, I like listening to Don. He's he's such a great analyst, and he's 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 been around uh, a lot, and uh, and he has a lot of experience to uh, bestow on on our traders. So, thanks for having him here, and thanks for guiding us every day, Dale. Uh, thank you, Blake, and uh, thank you, team, and uh, welcome back, Don. Great to have you. Don does uh, his work on barchart.com. Thank you, Dale. Appreciate it, and uh, happy to be back. And uh, that has uh, plenty of visibility. It's a great site. It's been around for a long time, and they they don't bring people on to do analysis that don't have value added. So, Don, uh, what's on the docket today? Well, it's uh, I you know it's, it's kind of fun. I was listening to you guys talk about the currencies here for a little while, and uh, I, I'm a longer time frame trader, right? You know, daily, weekly type right. thing. And I tell you what, interest rates and currencies have been the biggest bear or pain in my butt for 2024 and part of 2023. And I, I just like, man, how are you guys making money in that? I'll never know. But it's uh, it's good to see somebody is because uh, on a daily charts, uh, they they're just don't trend as well as they were doing say a year and a half ago. But um, yeah. you know, I just over trade a little more chop. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, except for the yen, a lot a lack of volatility. Right. Really, we've been moving sideways in the dollar for a while. Yes, so yeah. wh yeah. where are you seeing trends, Don? You know, I've um, I wrote an article here. I'm just gonna if I can share a screen, I'll pull it sure. up here real quick. And oh, yeah, uh, buddy, and let's so just go here and share. There we go. And uh, this was one that just came out last week, and I just put it out on bar chart and. It was on the crude oil market. And, you know, crude oil has been following a very, very good seasonal pattern all year long. And I've been pretty impressed with the way that thing has been sort of sort of meeting all the peaks in the seasonal patterns for the year. And uh, if it just 
at the beginning of it here, I just kind of put in some information here about some of the fundamentals that are behind everything. And, uh, you know, some of the API and the EIA reports that have been coming out. And uh, it, they were, you know, there were some days we were coming in, they were looking a little bullish, but overall, it doesn't look all that strong. So uh, there's some stuff that have been going on overseas as well. I mean, we had, I think Russia was, uh, a, or, I'm sorry, Ukraine attacked one of Russia's uh, big yeah. oil export areas. Uh, Israel attacked that Yemeni uh, port. Uh, it, it was just amazing how many things were really bullish for oil to stop and run. Tankers, uh, tankers yeah. exploding. Yeah. yeah. But they didn't, oil didn't go anywhere. It literally went down, you know, it went up and then it just went down, down, down. And I've found in my my history is is when markets have that kind of a catalyst to go somewhere and it doesn't, it's usually the op, that market's pretty weak in this case, because in my opinion, and you know, I know news is you know can be a catalyst for things, but that was two pretty big things that could have impacted supply and it really didn't push oil any higher. So that I thought that was pretty bearish. And when you tie it in, like right here, I took an overlaid, uh, well, this chart here. I'll come back and I'll show you. This is the actual seasonal pattern for uh, crude oil here. So taking what crude oil has done this year, and the green line here is the seasonal pattern, a 15-year pattern for crude oil. And this is my favorite one right here. We've talked about this one on your show before, but when you get in oil back here around this December time frame right here, it usually rides on up until around 1st of May. Beautiful trade. And you can confirm this each year by looking at something called a commitment of traders report. And what you're looking for here is to see on the commitment of traders report, you want to see the um, producer processors in there. It's actually the refiners who are doing the buying because they're getting ready to buy oil for the upcoming driving season. But you want to see them very bullish, meaning that week after week, they're buying oil. And if they're doing that along about this seasonal period window, it's a pretty good sign that we're going to have a good run. And obviously, I look for a trend to turn up as well. And once that trend turns up, the commercials are buying, I'm all in. <laughs> it's, just, it's just been a really good trade to follow. And then it peaks out around that May 1st. And then this green line shows we're just going down here until about June sometime. And when you look at the actual prices of the September contract, that's exactly what we did. We bought them out. And, and remember, these transition areas here are within, say, a week or two, something like that. They're never precisely on the same day, right? right. But somewhere in this general area. And then we rally back up. And basically, usually come back up and retest that May high back in here. Sometimes we go a little bit higher, sometimes a little short like we did here. And now you're seeing this pattern is starting to roll down. And the price action is rolling down as well. And when we come down here and look at this, it's a very similar pattern. So here's the same concept from January up to that May timeframe is that bullish move that we see. And then we get that same move down, this one right here, right? And that's happening. And then we get this move back up. You see, in 15-year history, it, it comes back up here. Like I said, sometimes it makes a new high, retest this, or it comes up a little shy like this one does. And that's what we did this year. And notice we're starting to see the price drop off here. And we're dropping off here. And so basically what this is happening here is, uh, I think it's August the 22nd, somewhere's in there. I had it written on here somewhere, uh, is around the last trading day for um, oil. And Do you launch <laughs> fresh money at shorts uh, after this kind of decline we've had, or do you wait for a rally? rallies yeah I, I sell into resistance and a downtrend and i buy in the support on uptrend so yes i i have a hard time sort of trading breakouts because i'm not a very good trader at that i tend to buy highs and sell lows when i uh when i trade breakouts but I, I just my strategy just isn't conducive for that but basically what this is doing every year is it's selling off into the expiration of this september contract which is around august 20th approximately and it's just a pretty consistent uh, pattern right here so i'm just looking for you know some selling pressure coming in here uh in the market. The, um, one of the things I'm looking for, too, I, I was just pointing out, if you go back on your charts and even some of your, like the U.S. dollar index, for example, when the assassination attempt was on Trump last week, uh, June 15th was the first trading day, right? Or July, I'm sorry, July 15th coming in. And when you take that July 15th, I take like that opening price on that daily chart because that was the first time people could trade on that Sunday night, for example, and just put a line across that, across your chart. And watch how that particular line acts as resistance or support. And it's in, in the dollar index, for example, we've gone away from it, come back, and we're just kind of hovering right around where we opened on that July 15th right now. It's like it's like the Trump trade is what people have been talking about, right? Uh, like current crypto and stuff like that took off. And that's that is staying way above that July 15th date, which is very bullish for crypto, in my opinion. So anyway, it's, it was a very significant day in our history, right? And the markets took it as a significant day as well. So I use that score like a line in the sand in some of these markets. And the July 15th was somewhere back over in here. We poked above it a little bit and couldn't close above it, came back down, came back up and retested it, and now we're working our way lower. 
So with Trump, for example, it's drill, baby, drill, right? So if that man does get elected uh, as president, we'll see a whole lot more oil coming out. And and I'm not I'm not looking that far into the future with this trade, but in the back of my mind, it could be that traders are anticipating some kind of bearishness uh, coming. If you know, depending on how the election goes going forward, so that, it, it's just kind of a bearish environment for me in the sense of crude oil. And I think we just got a little bit uh, lower to go in this market. Well, uh, all commodities. Uh, until recently, except gold, have uh, the CRB has been under pressure. Yes, yeah, I agree. Rains haven't done any. Copper has collapsed. Oh yes. Hey, hey good morning. Good morning, Don. Uh, Dale, I just want to say uh, your microphone's kind of light right now, buddy. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Much Thank better. You. Thank you. All right. Uh, so, Don, uh, you know the rest of the board has been under pressure, mm -hmm. uh, and it's not because we have a runaway strong dollar either. It so, isn't. Right. So, I mean, do you, do you feel like we have a deflationary impulse coming and is is it coming from China? Yeah, well, China, well, they had to cut their interest rates with this, this right. week, trying to stimulate their economy, which tells me they're certainly not importing like they're going, you know, they had been, right? So their economy is certainly not strong. Uh, our government's getting ready to cut interest rates, uh, our central bank is getting ready to cut them in September, right? Uh, Europe is already in a recession, or at least Great Britain and so on like that. So, you know, if the, the world economy is going into that uh, recession uh, period, basically, is what it seems like, because why would a country be cutting interest rates if it didn't see signs of slowing down? And that's going to impact commodities. And, and plus, commodities went through a boom and bust cycle. Uh, I think we talked about that on one of your shows, matter of fact, how markets, when they go to all-time highs like they did with the grains and with oil and stuff like that, when they go back up to these all-time highs, they typically go from a production call, I'm sorry, from that boom, which is the high price, and they come back down to approximately the production cost. Uh, I just wrote an article on corn about that recently, and that was a great example. We went all the way up to the $8.41 area approximately. Yeah. All new highs up in there, uh, and then from there it just it's come all the way back down to this, uh, like four dollars, about well, basically four dollars basis December. Uh, I wrote an article uh, back when it was up around near closer to five, and I said, which is first, six dollars or four dollars or three dollars and twenty cents? And boy, I get a lot of pushback on that one, but that's what it's doing, and and the commercials are very happy to sell. And this is a very interesting point down here, is because like in a market like that. It just it gets oversupplied, and that's what happens when you have a boom type of a market, and that's what our commodities went through was that uh, super cycle in commodities recently. And when that kind of a thing happens, everybody and their brother tries to go and produce these commodities, and then it just gets oversupplied too quickly. And so the market has to clean all that out. It's almost like uh, retail traders jumping on a fast-moving market up, right? And then the market seems to want to come back and cleanse that out. Same yeah. concept with here is what I'm referring to. Do you so think we're getting close? I'm seeing some... Uh, indications that we could be getting some type of bottom developing in corn. Corn you know, uh, looks okay. I, you know, I, I would say that, but I it, it's just, here's the problem with it. When you look at the commitment of traders report and we look back, the average price to produce corn this past year uh, and was something like around $5.10 or something like that. That's what it cost to produce the corn, right? Then this, as we had carryover into right now, for example, from last year's corn crop, there's 16% more corn in farmers' uh, elevators right now than last year, which is a record high number of corn, and it hasn't wow. been priced yet. And what and how you know that is one you, you've heard from people in, who, in that business talking about it, and the other is when you look at a commitment of traders, you can look at the year over year short positions on the producers, for example. And we are almost one hundred and fifty thousand less contracts than we were this time last year. And, and normally we should be up at a much higher number of shorts because the producers would have sold into the spring rally, but they haven't priced that corn yet. So now we have managed money at record shorts in the corn market. We have producers just dying for any kind of a rally, and they're going to sell into that rally. So that's two of the largest market participants we have who are waiting to sell more. So this market, I think, has got lower prices to go. I, there's no bottom in corn yet. Okay, you have a view on risk with what just happened here, Don, in the last uh, couple of weeks with the Superstar Mag 7. I, I know, uh, you know, you are to market phenomena, and that has definitely been a phenomenon. Yeah, you think that, they broke the back of them? 
I think, yeah, let's just say, I, I don't think they're going away, right? Because they're, they're just, yeah. we're so dependent on that technology, for example. But I think they definitely, they just, uh, I believe somebody on your show had just mentioned earlier, uh, like with gold, it just gotten too far, too far ahead of itself. And the market just needs to be cleansed. But, uh, you know, it was, it, what was interesting was the, um, well, it was God, about three or four days before they actually broke. Uh, something I like to watch is the, uh, let me see if I can find out here. Let me pull this up on the screen really quick. And someone's asking, Don, does Bartard have a new filtering provision? No. Filtering for, I'm sorry, for filtering what? what? What are you asking about, Barry? Filtering on what? If you're still here. Go ahead, Don. Okay. Here we go. 50 day. There you go. So what this is, this is a chart of the S&P 500. It's the number of stocks above the 50 day moving average. All right. And this is what I like to watch here. Basically, when we're trading above the 50, for example, it's market. That means there's more stocks above the 50 day, 50% 50, 50 right. of the stocks are above the 50 day moving average. And you can see here, and when you look at your daily charts and stuff, you can see we were pretty bearish on price back in here. But did, did, this happened a couple of days before. That was the Russell. That's yeah, the, uh -huh. the CPI. So, yeah. yeah, so when those guys, they started to rally up, okay? And, and what was interesting was we had a day where the S&Ps and the NASDAQ were down something like, uh, right. you know, one and a half percent, one and three quarter percent. And this thing took a huge jump up. Now, think about that. That means, because remember, those are just a seven when the S&P and stuff does that. But when this thing makes a move like that, this is the whole 500 S&P stocks making a move. So that's when things like that uh, average weighted balance or uh, what do you call that? The equally weighted uh, RSP ETF, for example, had a magnificent day. The next day, the Russell and the Dow futures were kicking in as well. So I, I really like to watch this thing to give me a pretty good clue uh, internally like that. So this was a tip right here to me that when these things broke hard and the S&Ps to the upside and the S&Ps were down and the NASDAQ was down, that that was a rotation uh, getting ready to start going into some of these stocks that have been beaten down to the bottom bottom, you know, hundreds of the S&P 500 that they're now starting to get bought up and, and turned around. So, so if you notice the RSP or, or I'm sorry, the, the equal weighted indexes and stuff like that, they've been hanging in there on this sell off. Uh, even the Dow hasn't come back as bad as NASDAQ and S&P, but it just, I think it's got to cleanse that uh, magnificent seven out of there. Okay. All right. I don't know how far it'll go. It's hard to say, <laughs> but a a any, uh, any view on gold? Ah, gold has just been sideways to me. I mean, I know we've had a couple of hard breaks here, but when you look at it on a bigger chart, uh, let me just pull this up here really quick. It really you hasn't. Know, you've worked. been around for a while, and I talked about this with different people when we talk about gold. When China came out and said they didn't buy any gold this month, and they did that twice, and they took gold down 35 bucks, do you think they mm -hmm. did it so they could buy at a better level? <laughs> it's funny you say that, Dale. China is so known to do silly stuff like that. You know, they do yeah. that in grain markets as well. I know. For years they make I've been a, watching it. Yes, yeah. they make a tender for soybeans or corn or whatever it is. Yeah. And all of a sudden now, when they make that tender, the market hears about the tender. And, and then to them, that's taking supply out of the market. Well, it didn't have been delivered yet, but that's an intention to buy. So the price rallies on that because of taking the supply out of the market. Right. Then China will go along they for a few weeks, to come in, cancel it, right? And the price right. crashes down further than where it was, and then they come in and buy it again. So, no, I would not put that past them, to tell you the okay. truth. But, I was uh, just wondering what your thoughts were on that. Yeah, I think I mean, that's just one of the games. I don't think they're you know trying to become a country of transparency. No, no. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> But you know, with this gold chart, when you're looking at this, though, I mean, you can see back in here, we got, you know, going back to what, April, it, it's just, just literally sideways, in my opinion. We Three just got to drive. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I think we're just stuck in here for right now. And maybe after the election, I think a lot of these markets might start showing some trends one way or the other, up or down. I have no idea. But it's almost yeah. like just, these markets seem like they're sitting on their hands in the bigger picture right now if, until something happens. And there needs to be a catalyst coming along here somewhere. Iran? Oh, please. Let's hope not. <laughs> but you never know. But uh, it, it, it was here. 
He, yeah, he's I been know. pleading that case forever. Uh, I know it. And what was it last week? They announced uh, Iran announced they were only a couple of weeks away from getting that uh, enriched yeah. uranium or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, okay. Well, uh, anything else you want to cover? Uh, not really. I'd, uh, I'd so like sell to... rallies, sell rallies in uh, WTI. Uh, yeah, seasonally corn. weak for yeah, another I month. Think, I think corn and WTI both just selling rallies uh, would do you do you well. And don't listen to all these top and bottom pickers because I mean you know you can pick tops and bottoms, but there's only one real top and one real bottom in every move, right? But how many false ones are in between that? And if you get caught up in those false ones, you know trying to pick them all the time, by the time the real one comes, you're usually so beat up you can't pull the trigger to take that one. So, so yeah, anyway. they really haven't. Yeah, they haven't beaten me up. Uh to that extent that I've given up. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're one of the uh, ones that uh, one of those people give up on that. <laughs> I love the trip. I love my Anyway, Don, uh, uh, great talking to you. Uh, people find you and uh, show them where they could go to barchart.com okay. to find you. Yeah, it's. Uh, I just write these articles for them about once a week, and then uh, do some of the podcasts. Not, so just, not just, not just. I just, uh, <laughs> just, I just. just but um, anyway, if you're on the barchart.com's website right here, uh, there's a tab up here called News, and if you left click on that, uh, then you come down over on the left side it says Featured Art, uh, Authors, and then down here, right about fifth yeah. name down there's my name is Don Dawson. If you just click on that. You know, the archives, he's going back is, I think I've been with him almost two years now. It's so all my articles that I've written. And what I do is I try and give uh, information in here about how I use seasonality, how I use the commitment yeah. of traders report and so on like that. Uh, it's it's you know, free articles. And if you want to follow me, you can just click up here where it says follow this author. It's all free. And they'll just send you a link every week when I send out a new article. And basically, uh, I enjoy writing. It, it kind of helps keep your finger on the pulse of uh, multiple markets and stuff like that. But, but this corn market, I, I've been on top of this thing since way Way back when uh, corn price here to go, it was a corn prices sub yeah. 325 before six. Boy, you talking about? I think I got normally I see around 2,000 some hits or so, something like that. This one went to 13,000. Yeah. So it was really, controversial. Yeah. Oh, it was pretty controversial. It really yeah, was. Those are the ones that get the hits. Yeah, it really yeah. But it went. Well, I know way. Alexander Perna said that, uh, you know, he, he, he referred you to me and respects your work and yeah, he wants to and he wants you to put in your will that he <laughs> inherits all your seasonal stuff. Oh, he, want, uh, he, want, oh. he wants to inherit your seasonal stuff. I, I might have to do that. He's a good guy. Uh, he's a good guy. He, he's, he is he, a good guy. He is. I like him. All right, buddy. Well, uh, don't worry about me. I'm uh, I'm taken care of. I'm a one uh, trick, sure. one you, trick pony in the markets anyway. So, uh, really well appreciate, yeah, appreciate you coming in every three months or so, Don, and okay. uh, and uh, I, people, uh, you want to learn about seasonals? Here's a great source. Okay, Don is a great source. So Thank you, very you much. know, go go to Bar Chart and check his stuff out. Uh, if you keep an open mind, you'll keep your account open. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Don, my trading warrior brother. And that's a wrap. Remember, everyone, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. And I know this is Think A Lot Thursday. Try not to think a lot today. Okay. And uh, just trade the action. And we'll see you tomorrow. You know, I have Pedro tomorrow. Uh, Pedro used to be uh, with the Wall Street Journal. He's with Market News International. Pedro Jacosta uh, used to be at all the Fed press conferences. Anyway, um, should be a great interview. Okay, he who did he speak to? Uh, well, anyway, yeah, Sheila Blair. Okay, so it's Sheila Blair has seen a lot of things come in advance. So I'll be able to talk to Pedro about those things tomorrow. So see everyone for TGIF. Good luck the rest of the day. Uh, be part of something bigger than yourself. Join the community. Adios.